Hello, you're listening to Ready, Set, Go! Real Estate Investing Podcast, presented by Brandon Elliott. This show will be going over all aspects of real estate investing and is intended to educate, motivate, and prepare you to take action on your first or next real estate investment. For more information, please visit BrandonElliottInvestments.com. Thank you for listening and enjoy. Welcome back, everyone, to Ready, Set, Go! Real Estate Investing Podcast. I am your host, Mr. Brandon Elliott. I'm excited today. We have a special guest coming from my neck of the woods to a certain degree, New Jersey, which is awesome. I'm from South Jersey, but but Sean here is, is from more upper North Jersey, I guess, right outside of the city. And we actually connected on a Bigger Pockets forum, which is pretty cool. The power of networking, right, and social media. And what's really cool is once I actually started diving into this guy's story, it's like, wow, he's been able to do a certain just small increments that have been able to set himself up and his family for success and get that financial freedom just over a number of years. And it's just, it's not like he's doing like a hundred units here or something that is impossible or something even mind blowing for the average you know, person just getting started. So I thought it was a no brainer to have this guy on here and really be able to just dive in step by step how he's been able to do it so that you guys can get that education, the motivation to be able to do the same exact thing. And then the step by step on how to without further ado, Sean, what is happening, man? How you doing today? Very good. Thank you for the introduction. I really appreciate it. Kind words. Yeah, um, yeah. Glad to be here. really am. Yeah, man. I'm excited to have you. As we connected, you started telling me a little bit about your story. For anybody out there that doesn't know exactly who you are or where you're from, I know I mentioned New Jersey, but if you could just dive in a little bit deeper about your background and what you're up to today and how you got there, that'd be awesome. Sure thing. Yeah. So I grew up in Morris County, New Jersey. You know, I always had an interest in finance, you know, from a young age. I wasn't necessarily real estate investing until I got a little bit older. But, you know, fortunately, I found my way into real estate. I surround myself with some great like-minded individuals that helped in my journey. And currently today, we have a couple properties that we house hacked in eastern New Jersey from where we are. So that's Essex and Union County. And, you know, they're doing a magnificent job where we're at the point where, you know, we're living with our current mortgage paid for because of these properties. So it's a great experience that we had. We did it with four kids and two dogs. That's my go-to saying. I love sharing that. And it was just an amazing journey that we embarked on these past couple of years. I love it. So house hacking is your strategy, right? That's that's what you've done. And you've done it with a nice size family right now. So I know you're a realtor now, but that wasn't always the case, correct? Like what were you doing prior or what does the day job look like? Gotcha. Yeah. So I met my wife in college and pretty much within the first month of meeting her, her father offered me a job at the family company installing gym floors. So that's what helped pay for my college. That's what kind of set us up was literally getting out there and installing floors, you know, year round, particularly in the summertime, just going crazy like that. So that was my day job. Once I graduated college, I stuck with the family company, continued working there. And that ultimately funded, um, you know, our multifamily adventures. So that was our day job per se throughout the process. You know, we still work with the company. So have a great time doing everything in that retrospect. But yeah, that's what kind of started us on this journey. Okay. So family business, your wife is in the business as well. Absolutely. Yep. Okay. And then why real estate? Like what sparked real estate and you know, what year did you actually jump into real estate? Great question. So I started looking around with real estate probably around like 08, 09, just kind of get my mind around it. And then I would say fast forward a couple of years, I kept seeing like rich dad, poor dad kind of found bigger pockets, you know, and I, I had, it's a crazy story. We're visiting friends down in the Carolinas when it was at a military base because they're military at the time. And this random kid just came up and got rich dad, poor dad. And I'm like, what, what is he talking about? He's telling these stories. I'm like, I, I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. I, I just remember him saying the name of the book. Didn't think much of it. Fast forward to like 2011, 12, I really stumbled across bigger pockets. And then I kept seeing it on repeat. Rich dad, poor dad, rich dad, poor dad. So I picked up the book. I'm like, it, yeah. it must make sense. And yeah, I think like many of us, that sparked the true interest in real estate investing, which really accelerated my journey. 
So from there, I just kept on networking, meeting other members, and uh, started diving deep into real estate. I love it. It's so weird how that like that random book ends up sparking so much interest. And it's like that that ground level of um, really getting the, the entrepreneur spirit and jumping into real estate, that first deal sparking the motivation. So I don't know what it is about the book, but it is something special that like myself included and so many other people, it's the same exact thing. It's the same story, which is really crazy. It's crazy in a sense that like when people ask what's the most influential book, I mean, I do go to Rich Dad, Poor Dad, but looking back at it, there are so many other books that are just so much better quality, so much more in depth, but the simplicity of it, I think really just set me on a great path. So from an influential standpoint, yeah, it's an amazing book, but I guess in terms of, you know, how to, or the process, it's not number one by all means, but no, no, it's so true. So there's other levels to it after you get that motivation, that first spark of interest, right? So, exactly. okay, what year did did uh, you get into your first deal? And let me ask, okay, so you had the interest to get into real estate. Did you know what strategy you were going to implement, what you're going to utilize? No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's really where the first deal was just not the best deal at all. Okay. It, you know, it was a great adventure, so yeah. grateful for it. But looking back at it, it was just, I guess, a mistake per se that ultimately led to, you know, where we are today. So very grateful for it. But it ended up being a single family property in North Jersey, which numbers wise, we just didn't know better at the time. It made zero sense. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Okay. So the single family house, you guys moved into that though, right? That was uh, owner occupied. And then the numbers obviously weren't really making sense. Did you pay too much for it or you just got it off the MLS? So it was, you know, there's, yeah. no, there's no extra meat on the bone right here, right? Yeah. I mean, we went in with the intentions of, oh my gosh, we're going to buy this property and we're going to move out in a couple of years and it's going to be a rental. and We're going to keep doing that on repeat. Yeah. And, you know, diving deep with more bigger pocket members, analyzing things, seeing different strategies. We came to the conclusion that we can get to where we want to be much faster if we go the multifamily route. And at the time, you know, house hacking didn't exist. So it was just buy a multifamily, live in one half. You know, it was house hacking. It just it wasn't coined that phrase yet. Yeah. So we were, I guess, addicted in a way to going that route, seeing the end results from being around other members that were doing it very successfully. And yeah, we ended up selling that property and went on that journey. Okay. So that first deal, you stayed in it for a couple of years. And then afterwards, you actually sold it. Yes. Okay, so, did you, um, you made money on that deal? Like I said, this, we were new at the time. So yeah. just to show our level of how much we knew, we weren't tracking anything. So okay. <laughs> we were still in that learning phase. We were newbies. We made, we had liquid cash at the end of the day when we sold it. All in all, I, you know, we didn't make money paying the mortgage ourselves with the renovations we did. You know, we updated it, but it was nice to walk away at least having some liquid cash after the sale. Sure. Okay. I love it. And then what was the next deal? What did that look like? Gotcha. So I guess to go to stay true to our journey and our story on our first deal, we had our first son. So he was born. This is, this is the funny part that really captured my attention too, because, uh, because yeah, you guys like making babies, right? (laughs) It was either we're having a kid or buying a new house for the next seven years. Or at the same time, like (laughs) one after another. (laughs) Yes, exactly. It's like every time a relative would take a phone call to be like, did you buy a new house or did you have a new kid? Oh, it was both this time. Oh, okay. (laughs) See you soon. (laughs) (laughs) So yeah, I mean, uh, that's where where we are in this whole thing. You know, we, we had the mindset in place that, uh, we know what we wanted to do and uh, we dove deep into it. We knew that if we kind of stayed at the single family, we wouldn't get to where we wanted to go as fast of a rate. Whereas if we sold it, moved back in with my parents and found that multifamily property that made sense. So at this point in the journey, yeah, my first son Maverick was born and my wife was probably about five or six months pregnant when we sold our single family, moved back in to my parents and then from there, moved into a multifamily out in Union County the week my son was born. My second son was born. Love it. So how many units was that one? 
So it is a legal duplex, but it was sold as an illegal quad. So from the basement to the first floor, second level, and the attic space all had a kitchen in it. They're all either two ones or one ones. And yeah, (laughs) it made for an interesting setup. Okay, so uh, they were listing it as if it's four units, but realistically, legally, you know, permitted and everything. So it was set up as a duplex. Kind of. It was listed as a duplex. It's just when you went in, it was an illegal uh, quad. So they took out, I think, like the stove because it wouldn't pass inspection in the basement. But there is a sink there, (laughs) no stove cabinet, you know, yeah, <laughs> things yeah. like that. Yeah. Refrigerator. <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. exactly. Yeah. We get a lot of refrigerators. Yeah. Okay. And so what did you do with that project? Like you guys moved into it right away and did you have to do any type of value add? Absolutely. Yeah. So we got in there and we went to work. We reconfigured things in a way where our end goal, you know, after calculating the numbers and running things, we could get the same rent as if we had an illegal quad than if we made a legal duplex. So they're all renting, you know, probably one ones and two ones in that area for about 1200 a unit. So yeah. we're like, okay, why not make this a legal, you know, property and we'll get anywhere from 28 to $3,000 a month in rent per unit for having it legal. So for us, it was a no brainer. We knew we had to update things. So let's just make it a four, two and a four, two. So this is like one of those unique situations, right? Usually you would naturally think if there's four units here, you can make a a good chunk of change off of each one to at least make a little bit more in comparison to if you separated it just into two different units making the income. But in your particular situation, in this case, this location, I mean, it's all so many different specifics behind it. But in this scenario, you were able actually to make more just off the two units, right? Exactly. And really, it's just a matter of the type of tenant we wanted to attract. You know, if we had it as two ones, you know, it would not have been as desirable. The setup would not have been as creative, I guess, in terms of one unit being in the basement. Although yeah. we have a high ceiling, it's still a basement. So you're never going to get that high end rent. Whereas now we converted that basement space into additional living space. Yeah. So you have three bedrooms up top on the first floor, one large bedroom in the basement with the legal size windows and all that stuff. So we saw the regulations and yep. then additional living space. So it really became a luxury high-end unit that now appeals to a family and commuters to New York City. Love it. Okay. So that was your avatar, right? That's who you guys are marketing to. And so you guys lived in one unit and then rented out the other? Absolutely. That was the goal from the start. We did not rent right away. The property was given to us vacant. So um, we did acquire a tenant for the basement on a short term. You know, we said, hey, you'll be month to month. Really nice gentleman. Still stay in touch with the guy today. He he always reaches out to us. Really nice guy. So he was renting down there while we were renovating the second and third level. So that took us a couple months. Eventually, we got that fully renovated and acquired tenants up there at which the next point would be we moved back to the basement and the first level and started working in our unit. Obviously our basement tenant at that point has to leave, which worked out well. Okay, nice. So let's go over the numbers here. How much did you guys purchase it for? How much was the rehab? How long did it take? Great question. Yes, purchase price four ninety five. dollars You know, it was on the market for a while. This is 2015. And yeah, so I, th- I think it was originally listed in high fives. But uh, yeah, we got down to four ninety five. dollars I use a 10% down loan, conventional. So that's something I always like to utilize. And I always like to introduce to my clients, low money down loans. You don't have to go the FHA route. So, which we actually learned out the hard way on our first property or single family, we did FHA and you had the PMI in order to get rid of it. You had to, you know, refinance and get a new loan. We love this conventional option because we could keep liquid cash in our pocket. So we didn't have to do the 20% or 25% down. Yeah. We opted for 10%. We could have done 5%, but we actually did the 10% just so we could reduce the PMI because at the time our credit was a little low. So that helped cancel out that side of things. So yeah, we did the low money down conventional mortgage, 50K went down, 50K was left in our pocket. And I always like to kind of bring that up because 
a lot of times people are under the misconception that, oh my gosh, I have to do like either 15% or 20% down loan for multifamily. Had we done that, it would have been hundred K down for the conventional mortgage and we would have been left with zero to renovate. So yeah, yeah. Um, with this option, it worked out with the liquid cash in our pocket. Of nice. Now, how long did it take for the rehab and how much was that? Yeah. So we ended up living in the property for about three years. The initial phase one of getting level two to three rented was about eight months or so. A lot of the work I was doing myself that I could do, the work that I had to sub out, you know, I subbed out to professionals. So in which I always like to say that I I voluntarily wanted to do a lot of this work so I can learn the process and be prepared in the future to know how it works, you know, just to know how to do it so I can perform if I have subs come in to do work, if that makes sense. So I willingly wanted to do a lot of it myself. This process, yeah, about, about I think eight to 10 months or so before we got tenants up there. But you were okay with taking longer and sacrificing, I guess, uh, the cash flow instead of hiring it out so you could learn the trade a little bit more and, and be exactly. able to set up that foundation for your, yourself in the future as you can scale and hire on people, make sure that they're doing the job correctly. Exactly. It was a combination of that. And I think it was also a combination of every time I got a quote from someone, I'd be like, okay, $30,000. And then I'd be like, go to YouTube. And I'm like, okay, I'm doing it myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hear that. Yeah. Okay. And so at the end of the day, do you know roughly, you know, how much you spent on the rehab? So combined for both units up top and lower would be around $50,000. Um, that included new heating systems for both, uh, new cabinets, new countertops, updated the bathrooms, uh, reconfigured some bedrooms, stuff like that to maximize space. So it, it's around 50,000. Gotcha. So 50K for the rehab, you did a majority of it yourself and it took a little bit longer, but you got the foundation, right? And then, so you're paying PMI, uh, you put 10% down, so 50K down, you're right at 500K roughly for your purchase price. Uh, yes. what, what was your monthly payments? At that time, it was around 3,300. Gotcha. And that was including like the, the two or 300 in PMI. Yeah. And, and then, so what did you end up, you know, renting out the, the top unit for? Great. Yeah. That unit we ended up renting out for 2,800. 2,800. So, uh, yeah. At, the, at that time, I mean, we were literally, I was commuting a lot to the city, by the way. So we were living in a four bedroom, two bath with about a 35 minute commute into uh, lower Manhattan. So nice. Yeah, that, that's, you know. yeah. yeah. For, for anybody that doesn't know, that's a steal right there. I know that might sound like aggressive for some people yeah. wherever you know you live, but driving into the city and the commute and everything, it's very typical for people to be in traffic for an yeah. hour or more. So doing a 30 minute drive and being able to, you know, get a majority of your mortgage paid and only have $500 left remaining, like that's some awesome house hacking for your family. Great. So now is this the project that, you know, you ended up getting it it appraised for about 300,000 more in just a matter of a couple of years? Yes. So, uh, you know, when we're ready to move out, you know, we, we knew we had to get the appraisal done and we're just like, okay, come on, please, please, please. Uh, let's get to that marker so we can go on to the next one. Let me ask first, were you planning on selling it or just doing oh, the no. cash out refinance and try to get some money so you can move on to the next? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we, we're long-term with these. Um, we're definitely playing kind of the infinite game with these properties. We don't have any intentions of selling them in the near future. So then basically your strategy is kind of like the Burr strategy. It's just a longer extended one that you're doing house hacking for, for the first couple of years uh, yeah. as you're doing the remodel and so forth. Yes. And I'll be honest, uh, the reason it took so long is because once again, I, I was newer yeah. at the time and I wasn't too familiar of the lending strategies. And sure. my lender at the time was like, well, you need to get, you need to qualify your rental income. So we were on this idea that it had to take two to three years, yeah. but really, you know, diving deeper in, you know, we found out some other strategies that could really get us there much faster to not sure. go that route. So that's really one of the main reasons why it took so long our next property, we were like, boom, in and out. So just kind of throwing that out there. 
the more education you dive into, the more you learn, you know, in the beginning, you grab onto one idea or whatever. And if it makes sense, then you're like, cool, let's go in. And at least many people get distracted, right? They keep on going down the rabbit hole or they jump ship halfway into their method because they see something on social media that, you know, some, some guy makes it look easy and amazing and quick and, you know, simple. Um, So so the cool part is you guys found something that worked, you stick to it. And then over time, now you've been more educated to identify with certain other techniques that you can go a little bit faster. Absolutely. Yes. You nailed it right on the head there. Mm -hmm. Love it. Okay. So this project, it appraised for what? 800,000. Love it. uh, So it was three years later, correct? About that time. Yes. Okay. So there's a couple of reasons here why it could do this, right? Because as this was what, 2015? 2015 when we purchased, 2018 when we appraised. Yeah. So obviously the market's going up as well, which is great. And then you guys did put 50,000 into it. And a majority of that is, you know, sweat labor. So, you know, a lot of that's materials and so forth, which goes even further as if you put in like a hundred K, right? So the nice part is plus you're renting out the other unit, which is great. Over the three years, were you able to get a higher rent for the upstairs or? This year, most likely will be a little bit higher just because of the demand and everything. But we kept it at 2,800 over that time because we had long-term tenants. They were there for a couple of years. And then let me backtrack. Our first group of tenants were there for a year and then we had long-term tenants. And then we did get a little fearful once they moved out because it was right around COVID was hitting. So we're like, okay, I don't know what's happening right now. It is right at the time when it was like everything was shutting down. So we kind of kept it as is. Sure. If it was a month later, we would have been like, okay, <laughs> yeah, we got to raise rent because the demand really people were not Whereas that first month, everyone was like, I'm not leaving the house. I'm yeah. not going anywhere. So sure. um, just to put in that perspective. So we did keep it around the 2,800 marker. Nice. Okay, cool. And then you guys moved out of that one. You did a cash out refinance. So you got all your money back out and uh, that you put into it at least. So now you're walking away with some cash. What is your mortgage at now? Obviously it's higher. (laughs) Yeah. Well, so this is what's great about the low money down conventional. It is slightly higher, but we were able to wipe away the PMI. Once the appraisal came in, that just instantly went away. Literally the next month, you know, PMI was just a couple hundred bucks. So we went back down to 3000 and then now we're back up at like 3,500, somewhere around there, but we got $80,000 in a headlock back to us. Yeah. I love it. Okay. And then that bottom unit, is that running out for 28 as well or? Yeah, it's, it's 26, 26, 50. Yeah. Okay. Great. Once again, that was a little COVID thing as well. So, I mean, you know, Rent to be yeah. a little bit more. So now you're bringing in 5,400 and the monthly payment is 3,500. You know, I'm sure a couple expenses here and there, utilities, yeah. whatever. But you know, that, that's not a bad gig, right? Awesome. Yeah, it's awesome. I mean, uh, we're yeah. very grateful for it. So very happy. I love it. So now you're getting some cash flow from it. I'm sure you have some good tenants. Have you ever thought about doing short term rentals and like Airbnb? Would that make sense right there to bring in even more income potentially or just more of a headache even thinking about that? It was definitely something we were considering, particularly when uh, the U.S. Open or the championship for golf was was happening because right around the corner from us was the Boltus Roll. Yeah. So everyone in town was renting out units for a ridiculous price. 500 bucks a night. We just weren't yeah. ready at the time. So we were like, oh, man. So, yeah, it crossed our mind at that moment. I do have friends in town that are doing it with their basement. But, you know, they, they live on site and they're doing it very successfully. They're making money um, every month. But uh, I think just in terms of the simplicity of it, a yeah. hassle-free approach, we love our long-term tenants on uh, that particular property. So most likely we wouldn't go down that route unless, of course, there was something kind of tough to de- deny, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So I do want to talk about like learning curves or any uh, negative things or, you know, whatever type of struggles that maybe you've dealt with tenants or or anything during the construction phase. But really quick, you know, let's let's talk about that next deal. Is that what you're currently in or what does that look like? I uh, know the next deal is another duplex. The home that we are in now is a single family. So, so yeah, after I uh, did the cash out refinance on that one property, then you jumped into a duplex, lived in it as well, correct? Yes. 
did the you did uh, some upgrades to the property as well? Yeah, oh, absolutely. And okay. that that's kind of the nature of things. You know, if you want to really succeed in our market and get to that level where you can achieve cash flow and equity, you have to be willing to do the work. By all means, turnkey is possible. It's you know, it, depending on. I always do it on a scale of one to ten. One being a complete gut. 10 being a complete turnkey immaculate property. Yeah. If you go for 10, you're not getting that return. If you go for one, you got to be willing to do the work, you know, hire it out. I always try to get my clients myself somewhere in that three to seven range where, you know, uh, if you're comfortable, you're around a three where, you know, you can update the bathrooms, update the kitchens and you're comfortable doing that. Or, you know, maybe you're at a seven where it's, you know, you replace some of the cabinets and paint the walls, but you're not going yeah, you to paint too yeah. crazy. So I always like to throw that out there on my projects. The more willing you are to do some work and rearrange things, yeah. the more prosperous you can be as a house hack. Yeah. At the end of the day, like all real estate, I think this is a great tip right here. It's all about the value add, right? Whether it's a single family house, a, a you know residential multifamily or big syndication multifamily, like hundred unit plus, it's all about buying something that is slightly distressed or extremely distressed at a discounted rate. And then being able to do the value add of adding, remodeling, replacing, whatever, just making it appealing again and bringing back, you know, little, little sexy parts to it, making it nice again, and then doing your cash out refinance or your flip and selling. But obviously if you want that passive income and holding the property in your portfolio, then it's all about the cash out refinance to have little or, or no money into the deal. So you can move on to the next one, right? Yes, I agree. I love it. So, okay. So you jumped into a duplex next. What were the numbers on that? Once again, this is another illegal triplex. <laughs> really? <laughs> but, yeah. Not a quad, but a triplex this time. So, yeah, they're attracted uh, to you. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, it's that people will do whatever it takes to make it work. And that's kind yeah. of like a strategy that we implemented where, you know, there's one way of going about it. You have an illegal triplex. And we always thought about it like this. Do you want to deal with more tenants for the same amount of rent or deal with less tenants for the same amount of rent? and yep. increased value. So, yep. um, you know, kind of the same thing here. We converted the triplex into a duplex for legal purposes. And uh, because we were able to get a uh, higher rent, you know, and make it more uh, affordable and everything and attractive for ourselves. Numbers wise, this once again is another property. I think it got listed, oh my gosh, somewhere in like the mid 600s. It was on forever. We ended up that's, getting- That's what you bought it for, 600? No, 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 no. That's what it was listed for. Yeah, it listed for. Uh, we, we got it for about 525. 525. Uh, all in all. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. And then uh, it was two units. Or that's what you converted it back into. And then which you lived in one of the units. What was the remodel on? Yes. Yeah, so with this one, this is also unique to our story that this is the first time we acquired tenants. So we had tenants on the first level. You know, nice people, but uh, their value was really, they're really undervalued for the rents, like big time. So, upon, how much was it rented out for? Oh, uh, 1600 and, and how much should it have been? According to Zillow, 1900 According to me, closer to 2500 <laughs> so. yeah, yeah, okay. And, and that was in its current condition, but I'm sure you had to do a little bit of a remodel to it. Gotcha. Current condition, it was probably around 1900, 18 to 1900. But going back to, you know, our prior statements, you know, we got to add the value. And yep. uh, yeah, for this deal to work, we had to be, you know, into the mid twos to gotcha. uh, get to where we want to be. So how long did the remodel on this one take and how much was it? Yeah. So we moved in really fast. At this time, we had the process going. So we wanted to get out of our duplex so we could fully rent it in Union County. We did that. Moved in, and uh, at this moment, you know, I was good at installing cabinets and everything, so I knocked them in really quick on the second level, got everything ready. All in all, we had eighty thousand that we cashed out for, uh, you know, the Hellock. It was around forty to fifty thousand for the renovations in the whole unit from start to finish. Okay, gotcha. Okay, and, and that took a couple months. Yeah. So uh, our unit. We got done pretty quick. You know, we were just doing it at that moment so we could get in. So not everything, but I wanted to get like the floors done and the kitchen, the main living area so we can move in, be comfortable. 
that took about a month and a half, two months, which that is right when the lower unit was moving out. So the second they moved out, we went full focus on the lower unit so we could get that rented right away. So um, I guess to answer your question, it was quick for us to move in, but it wasn't fully completed until after we finished the lower unit. Okay. So it took a few months to remodel and I'm sorry, how much was it again? You said roughly like 50 K? Yeah, around there. I'll say around 45,000. 45 K. Okay. And you're renting out the other unit for 25 K or 2,500. Yeah. So, um, wish it was 25 K, right? Let's, let's get yeah, to those yeah, yeah. numbers, baby. <laughs> Maybe in a couple of years, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So that unit, we, uh, I guess kind of backtrack a little bit once they moved out, there was a lot of hidden value there. Initially, we went in, and I always like to tell this one, uh, <laughs> when we were viewing the property, we opened up one of these doors in the kitchen, and there's just this massive walk-in pantry. I mean, <laughs> it had a window. It was a full walk-in pantry. I'm just like, this is a two-bedroom, one-bath. This pantry is massive. What's going on here? Really? So, wow. <laughs> we converted it to a half-bath. So, I mean, that was one of the huge value adds. And then they had a sunroom, which we converted into a bedroom. So we made it into a three bedroom, one and a half bath, which uh, ultimately drove up the rent for that particular unit to uh, 2450. 2450, cool. Okay, and so what was the goal with that one? How many years did you stay in that? We were quick. At that point, we had the system down. So we finished up under nine months probably, man, probably six to eight months we were done because we were putting offers in for the property we're in right now, which we ended up moving out about a year into that. So okay. real quick. Nice. So, um, and you were doing owner occupied type of financing, right? Uh, yes. From deal to deal varied. Uh, on the second property, we did have help from parents because we had a track record at that point. So I was able to, you know, go to them and say, Hey, want to help out a little bit? Yeah. Yeah. Look what I did the first time. <laughs> nice, nice. Okay. I love it. Okay. So at this point, you did a cash out refinance on the last duplex. Did you get all your money back out on that one? So property number one, we're talking about? The, the duplex that you just moved out of, right? Oh, okay. You're in yeah. for nine months. Gotcha. So that was just a matter of financing it and paying my parents back. So yeah. that's what we did there. Still a little bit money, more money owed in that capacity, but uh, the bulk of it has been paid back. And uh, now it's just a matter of, you know, getting the rest over, but. Yeah. 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 Gotcha. Okay. Now let's talk about some struggles, right? Like what kind of struggles have you possibly been through? Great question. Believe it or not, not much with the kids. <laughs> they, they, they like, they love this journey that we went on. So I know that's probably something people are thinking in their heads, like, oh, must've been the kids. How could you do that? Mindset for the family, it was, it was a great adventure in that aspect. You know, I had some struggles with some of my subs. I, I had one guy that I, I really think he was on drugs. <laughs> Other than that, I mean, he did get the work done and he did do a good job. He was just a little wacky. <laughs> um, yeah. Some COVID struggles, you know, in terms of when our properties were ready to go on the market. We had that shutdown go down. So, you know, we did have a couple scary months and then kind of diverting back to the family business as well. Also a little scary there in that capacity. So I would say COVID was a struggle at a time, but we're here now, everything's working well. Those are probably the two big ones that stand out. All in all, I mean, looking back at it, you know, we definitely had, I guess, moments where I'm like, what am I going to do? But just kind of getting my mind around things and staying on course, I was able to get through a lot of these problems, but it really was a lot with mindset. Yeah. But, you know, all overcomable and uh, we were able to get through it. I love it. Now, many other people that have done similar things, they might have gone through common problems as far as like, either the wife not being as happy going through the transition, right? Because that can be, especially having a child almost every, you guys are up to four or is it five? Four. 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 Okay. Yeah. Another one I'm sure going to be on the way in the near future. We'll see. <laughs> Never know. Pray for you, brother. <laughs> okay. So, you know, you guys are slowly scaling and then you still have work, you still have your job. And now you have some contractors that you're trying to deal with or 
you know, uh, doing the work yourself. So that's a learning curve that's, that could take yeah. extra time. And that can be stressful, right? Of like thinking, hey, that more money's going out, it's taking longer and so forth uh, as you're doing it on your spare time. Or even just acquiring some tenants here and there or dealing with the ones that you put into the place. Have you, have you guys just been blessed and not had any issues with any of the tenants thus far? And, and really yeah, just, I course. guess, set them up for success, right? How you're leading them? Yeah, I mean, uh, fortunately, like I said, I'm around very, very smart people that have done this before, and uh, they were able to educate me on, you know, screening and stuff like that. So we could we so we could set ourselves up for success. Yeah, uh, you know, there were some tenant issues. I mean, one <laughs> there there are some silly things, I guess, in terms of like literally kind of bending over to flick a breaker switch because a, a light wouldn't turn on. You know, stupid stories like that, but. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing at the end of the day where it's like, oh my gosh, I can't believe we got into this mess. Uh, you know, uh, it, it's just kind of like silly things that we look back on and be like, wow, I can't believe that just happened, but it did. <laughs> yeah. I, I've actually had similar things recently. I've had a, just young tenants that, you know, they're wondering why their bathroom light like wouldn't turn on or something. And I was like, did you check out the breaker switch? And it, they check it out and I'm like teaching them how to flick it on. <laughs> and, uh, and they're like, oh, wow, it works. I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to call my contractor out there for this one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, but yeah, it's, I guess, guiding them, right? And, and leading them to success, which is awesome. And your wife has been supportive and, and uh, just, yeah, I love it. That's awesome. It's good to have people on the same boat, really passionate about the end goal, right? And I think what's, what is awesome about you guys, it's like, you guys are you, like you're creating a uh, generational wealth one step at a time over time, but you're also starting a family and they're in their young stages, right? They're all babies right now, which is nice because, you know, uh, they're not going to know any of this stuff right now. Like it, it's yeah. not going to be stressful necessarily for them. To an extent. I mean, like our oldest is seven. So, um, he has memories. My, my middle child has memories. And even my daughter, she's in the middle child as well. She, she has memories of all these places. So in that capacity, I mean, we are constantly going through our phone on a weekly basis and just going, you know, like we have iPhone. So I'll look like, oh, where were we a year ago? Where were we two years ago? Yeah. And some of the pictures, you know, I post a lot of them on my Instagram, just telling a story of like, this was the process. This is what we did. And they are amazing memories, like pictures of my son helping painting the walls or cleaning yeah. them up, holding a tape measure for me while yeah. measuring out something, you know, things like that. So the memories that we did create, that's part of them. Yeah. Uh, you know, we'll see how in depth they, are, they stay when they get older, but they definitely have those memories right now. They're constantly asking us like, Hey, what's going on at the old property? Can we go to the old property? Can we go to, yeah. you know, stuff like that. So, I mean, it was just part of our story and looking back at it, so grateful for it that we were able to kind of go against maybe some stereotypes of how could you move your family property to property and do all this stuff. And we were so happy and blessed that we were able to do that. Yeah. And I think with the right mindsets, right? Like when you have the right vision, the right goals, and you guys are all on the same page and communications, like what's cool is those awesome memories that the kids are are seeing and you guys are developing as they see their dad working hard, you know, remodeling yeah. these places. And you can tell them the stories behind it as, you know, why you guys moved out, why it's making cash flow now. And it's not necessarily like a liability. Now it's an income producing asset and you guys are scaling so that you guys can go on like a trip or something, you know, something rewarding. Then they're like, Oh wow, this is awesome. Plus you guys hold the properties in your portfolio. So those places that they bring up, like, Hey, when can we go, you know, back to the old property where we were painting that one day, you know, you can go back and check it out. And I just think it's awesome. I love that. So where do you guys see yourself going in the future? Like, it sounds like you're getting more momentum. You're doing this a little bit faster now. You're, you're starting to see the fruits of the sweat labor right behind it. Uh, yes. What's the plans moving forward? Well, definitely less on the sweat labor, um, yeah. more so in the capacity of it is fun. I will say that, you know, kind of like uh, the analogy of 
people that mow their lawn, they, they do it because it's relaxing. Well, I do think renovating a bathroom is relaxing. So it's always going to have that number side of things where it's like, if we're living in there, I'll probably renovate the bathroom myself because I enjoy it. But if it's, it's now- It's rewarding, it's, right? It, yeah. It's rewarding because, you know, you take something super distressed, you take it down to the studs and then you, you yeah. rebuild it. And it's like, oh, wow, I just did yeah. that. For example, one of my clients right now, we just closed on a duplex and he's sending me pictures and I'm just like getting jealous. I'm like, oh man, come on. I want to go knock that wall down. I'm like, come on, yeah. man. I want to take down some sheetrock for you. Yeah. Um, can you just have me come over for the day? You know, yeah. <laughs> it's fun. It's fun. It's, it's enjoyable. Hey, but, brother, um, if you ever need any, if you ever need any uh, spare time, you come over here and we'll, we'll help you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Right. So, you know, it, it's fun in that looking at it like that. But yes, I am scaling down in terms of having myself and everything do do the work for future deals just because it's more of a numbers game now. Sure. But I, I do enjoy doing some of the work. You know, for us moving forward, we're definitely in the saving phase right now. One aspect of that is we do have our first property tied up with the family business and tort in form of lending in that capacity. So it's kind of stagnant right now. Once we take that off uh, some of the, the loan that we're with the family business, we'll be able to access some of the capital in there. And then we're just kind of in a saving phase right now in terms of uh, what we're gonna do next. Possibly a bunch of different ideas out there, but our current property is a live-in fix and flip, not to the capacity of these other properties, more so it was just very outdated. So we're updating things, you know, putting in new floors, new kitchens, new baths, with the expectation of once we're here for two years, we'll either decide to sell or, you know, we'll definitely have that equity built in. Okay. Nice. Yeah. So who knows? You could keep it in your portfolio or just potentially sell it outright yeah. and walk away with some money, which is mm-hmm. nice. So I'm sure at this point you guys are buying deals with some, uh, I guess, stronger numbers. They might be a little bit more distressed at this point because you're getting more comfortable um, as you're remodeling and hiring out and so forth. Yeah, I mean, definitely looking at things uh, differently for sure. You know, a lot more comfortable finding a property that needs work to that capacity. But yeah, we definitely have expanded our our visions, I guess, for some. Love it. Love it. Well, Sean, I appreciate you so much, man. Nothing but value from you. And it's really exciting to see like the momentum that you are building up. For anybody out there that is just getting started, is there anything that you would recommend for somebody that is like just getting started and they want to try out the house hacking method or strategy? Yeah. I mean, uh, for me, it's really just a matter of, it's really came down the mindset you know, sure. are you interested or are you committed? You know, for us, we made that statement of we're committed once we told everyone we were selling our single family. That was yes. like, okay, it's not a joke anymore. They are serious. Yep. So uh, I would say if you're just starting out, you got to get around the commitment aspect of things of being ready to move forward. At the end of the day, you know, no matter what scenario we were in, we were going to find a way to get it done. So I think kind of have faith in the process. You know, even if it, the deal isn't the best home run or a grand slam, you still can find ways to make it work. You know, like our single family, you know, we knew we had to get rid of it, but it still didn't stop us or derail us. Whereas, you know, maybe someone else would have said, okay, I'm going to give up right now. Not a chance with our mindset and where we were going with this. Good. I love it. Awesome, man. Well, how can people get a hold of you? Sure. Definitely Instagram, Sean Sells N J R E. That's S H A W N. And then N J as in New Jersey and R E as in real estate. I love it. Cool, man. Well, I appreciate you so much, brother. I, I really do. Uh, you just gave an hour of your time. Anything that myself or the listeners could do to give back to you? Hey, I'm, I'm always open to connect. I love sharing, collaborating, you know, I'm connection with people all around the country. They're always reaching out. I'm just here to help any way I can. Definitely want to send that message out there that, you know, if you are in a predicament where you don't know if you can do something, I'm here to say you can, you know, we yeah. did it with four kids, two dogs, yeah. and we made it work. I think, you know, if you're considering this, I'm pretty confident you can as well, but um, by all means, Whoever is listening out there, feel free to reach out, message me, and uh, I'm here to help. Nice. And then for social media wise, basically just, is there any links or anything that you have? We can put in the show notes, but. Yeah, just, I, you know, my Facebook, Sean McIntyre, and then uh, Instagram would just be the uh, Sean Sells NJRE. 
So that's a great way to get in contact with me. Bigger Pockets, uh, Sean McIntyre. Um, I'm actually wearing this shirt and this face in my bio. <laughs> so I, I guess it's kind yeah, of easy to find me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love it. Well, thanks so much, brother. I really do appreciate it. And if you haven't already, make sure that you subscribe to Ready, Set, Go! Real Estate Investing Podcast and Absolutely. leave a review. Uh, let us know how you guys feel about it and reach out to this man. You know, nothing but value. He's really on the beginning phase of starting to build that momentum and, and getting some awesome traction and getting the cash flow that that, you know, really sets up the family for long term, which is awesome. You guys can do the exact same thing with the same house hacking strategies that Sean has used in the past. If you guys want to reach out to me, then you can find me on Instagram. It's Brandon Elliott Investments. Otherwise, facebook.com forward slash Brandon Elliott Investor. If you need any type of credit repair done for you services, then reach out to us at creditrepairmobile.com. Or if you're looking to get educated, to learn how to understand how the banks are judging us, how lenders are judging you, how to be able to fix your own credit very quickly and be able to remove bankruptcies and so forth or anything under the sun, or even build up your credit, you know, six figures or more on personal and even up to seven figures of funding on business credit within a year. And then, you know, obviously put it to work. We've been able to purchase properties with credit. We've been able to complete all of our remodels with credit. So we're not getting screwed over by contractors. And then even do hard money lending with our credit and all the travel hacks and so forth that comes along with it. There's a lot of awesome things that you can, you can do. Reach out to us at creditcounselelite.com. That's our mastermind group. That's our online education. And we'd love to connect with you and help you out in your journey for credit. There's a lot of power, but behind, you know, being educated so that you're getting the best rates and being able to fund your own deals or, or just make your credit work hard for you, just like the banks do. So with that being said, I appreciate you guys all so much. Sean, you are the man and we will see you guys next Monday on the next episode. God bless. Bye-bye everyone. This has been another episode of Ready, Set, Go! Real Estate Investing Podcast brought to you by Brandon Elliott. For more information, please visit BrandonElliottInvestments.com. Also, please don't forget to like, share, and leave a comment below. Thanks again for joining. Until next time, God bless.